I'm Alex with Fairly Honest Off-Road and today I'm going to show you what I have learned about mounting my MTRs on the Pro Comp feedlot wheels. They provide you with this special hairnet because if you get hair follicles in the bead, your rims will leak. So you fold that up like that, you put on your hairnet, pull that stuff off, off-road use only. If you want to take a bar and you want to scratch it, you got to be the first scratch on your wheel. I don't do this completely like the instructions say. I would recommend you follow the instructions and not my video. So the MTRs have a little bit thicker bead, calibrating it out to about 0.825 inches. Um, the instructions recommend that this wheel is for a 0.77 thickness bead. And what that does is this ring is supposed to touch the wheel. When you're all torqued down, the ring itself is supposed to touch the wheel so that it doesn't add strain to the bolts. If you've got a gap, if this is up off of the wheel when you get done torquing it to 30 pounds is what the instructions say, um, then it adds strain supposedly to the bolts and they can break. A lot of beadlock wheel manufacturers offer a spacer for that purpose. Um, the ones that I've done behind me here all have about one to two millimeter gap between the wheel and the ring. I uh, called four wheel parts and they said that they do not make, the Pro Comp does not make a spacer to allow for the thicker beads on their wheels. Um, and they recommended that I just run it the way it is with the gap. So that is what I am doing. Um, I, I'm running these with a gap. I do not have the the ring does not touch the wheel. Um, we'll see how that goes. The valve stem. When I was putting the wheels together, one of them, first one I did, I didn't forget, and I thought, I wonder how many idiots forgot to put the valve stem in before they mounted their bead lock. Well, I'm the idiot that forgot to put a valve stem in before he mounted his bead lock. Okay, so for whatever reason, the little washer that comes with the valve stem on the Pro Comp wheel, the valve stems I got, the washer doesn't fit inside the machined out area. So I've been having to grind the washer just a tiny bit so that this fits in the hole. Okay, now that my valve stem's in, I can put the tire on the wheel. If you look on your tire, most of the time they'll say this side, like this one says this side outboard, which means this is the outside, so this will go up. I got just a little bit of Dawn dish soap in a bucket with water. So soap that up really good. There you go. I don't know if every tire is like this or this difficult, but you've got to get this bead around that first lip. And so what I've been doing that's worked pretty good, because I was, I was chasing it, I couldn't get it to stay down. So what I found is these, using these big washers, where the bead is already good, like I got half of the tire on that bead. So then I just run these down. So I just take that washer and I suck that bead right down. Soap it. Both of these are Harbor Freight. Take this. So the, the other two bolts I did halfway. So this half of the bead is set. And now I've got this almost quarter. I 
And all these wa big washers are doing are just holding the bead in place so that when I work on this last little quarter of bead getting it on that this doesn't pop up and I don't end up chasing it around and around. So I got that tucked under there and rolled so now my bead is in place from here to here and I've just got this last about four inches left to, to do so what I've been doing do it at your own risk is taking this and then I just put this around and that's it my bead is in place all the way around You've got an insignia here that says Procomp. To keep it all consistent, I've been lining that insignia up with the Procomp that's on the wheel. I'm just going to snug up these four and get it in position. And then we'll go around and put the rest of the bolts in. I'm going to give it just a little tap I keep consistent with my trigger pulls just so it basically it'll turn the same I'm not running them down I'm just giving it just a little tap and I'm just doing the same tap after I snugged them all up then I'm just doing the same tap and this is your beginning order they provided a pretty cool little uh, I've put dots I laid that in the wheel and I line it up with one and six, three and nine. And then just to help me, I go through and I put a dot, because well, once you get them all in there and you're trying to go real fast to do them all, the dots help it make, make it easier to, to know exactly that you're doing the right bolt, because it gives you a reference point. Now every third bolt, I have a dot that matches the sheet. So they provide these little lock, lock washers, just make sure you get one in each hole and don't double up on them. It's important that you start them by hand so that you don't strip the wheel out. If you just stick them in there and hit them with the impact, then they could cross thread and strip. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through and snug them up. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna impact them, I'm just, Gonna go run them all down so they're touching. Okay, so now we're gonna do our pattern and I'm just gonna give it, like I was doing before, just a tap. And I'm just gonna go tap, tap. So my dots are a little hard to see. I'm gonna make them a little darker here. It really helps. Rocks, rocks will take the dots off. Okay, that was one time around, I'm gonna keep going. Start back at one. So one thing to keep in mind when you're running around with the sockets, it's really easy to go across them and it ends up putting little scratches in it, but I don't care. You're gonna get beat up. If you're not using your bead locks, don't buy them. So now that I went around it with the impact driver a bunch of times, I'm gonna to switch to the torque wrench. Now I did the uh, air ratchet on a couple of the tires. I didn't really like the consistency. So we're not gonna use that. What I'm going to do is follow the pattern, but I'm going to start at 10 pounds and I'm going to go around it at 10 pounds. One, round it once at 10, I'm going to bump it up to 15 and I'm going to do it twice at 15. Okay, now that I did it twice at 15, I'm going to bump it up to 20. We're going to do it twice at 20. We're 
We're gonna do it twice at 25. Okay, now that I've done it around twice at 25, I'm gonna bump it up to 30. And this is where you basically you bump it up to 30 and you keep following the pattern until they were all torqued. So where you didn't have to torque them anymore. I myself have taken the rest of these up to 35 and they're all torqued to 35. Um, that's on you, do what you want. But I uh, figured extra five pounds wouldn't hurt. It might. So if this video helped you at all, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to follow more of the Haralimony project, and we'll catch you next time. Thank you.